Hello, everybody. Thank you for joining us for today's webinar. Today, we're going to be talking about VFD controls using Unitronics VFDs. My name is James Capaletti. I'm an applications engineer here at Unitronics. We're going to be going through a quick PowerPoint presentation, and then we'll go through some examples. And at the end, we'll have a Q&A section. So if you have any questions, feel free to type them into the chat box, and we'll answer them at the end. So Unitronics offers a wide range of VFDs, ranging from 0.4 to 110 kilowatts, both in single and three phase. They can be used in a wide variety of applications, everything from filling, packaging, pumps, and so many more. Using the Unitronics platform, we have a complete range of PLC and HMI combination units, VFDs, all-in-one programming software, and of course, outstanding tech support. Let's go over some features of the Unitronics VFDs. Unitronics VFDs have built-in EMC filters, multiple mounting options, a broad range of operating temperatures. They're going to talk over Modbus RTU. Some of them will have built-in braking units. We'll use sensorless vector and torque control. They feature heavy-duty overload capacity. Our UL models will have STO, or safe torque off. And then when using Unitronics PLCs in conjunction with the VFDs, you'll be able to have remote access to all of your VFDs. The main lines we have here are the B1 and the B5. You can see in this chart here. Both have options for 200 volts and 400 volts, three phase and single phase, various motor types, overload capacities for 150% up to 60 seconds, all the way to 200% for one second. They both use the same control methods as well as the same control modes and feature analog and digital inputs and outputs. Here are some of the specs for the filters and the braking units. The enclosures are IP20. They use air cooling as well as fan cooling. And our US models are CEUL and CUL certified. Some additional accessories that you can get for our VFDs include external keypads, flange mounting plates, braking resistors, C3 and C2 input filters, as well as dam boards for heat releasing. When choosing a VFD, to find your part number, you'll first use UMI for Unitronics Motion Inverter. You'll select your power range. For example, if you were to have 0004, that would equal a 400 watt inverter, which is half a horsepower. You'd then select your power rating for one phase, 220, three phase 220 or three phase 440. You then select your certification, U for UL and E for our European models. And then your product series, either B1 or B5. The B1 models allow you to DIN rail mount as well as wall mount. You can see here a picture of them mounting in parallel. So let's talk about our control options for these VFDs. You have three main ways to control. First would be local with the keypad. Then you can use the terminal inputs. And then you finally have remote communication. For the keypad, you can see here, you can have external keypad, which can be mounted separately from the VFD. On the right, number one, you'll see your indication LEDs. This will tell you what the state of the VFD is. Number two shows you the units and what is currently being displayed on the seven segment display, which is marked at number three. Number four is your potentiometer dial. And number five, your push buttons. Using your potentiometer dial and your push buttons, you can have full control over your VFD. You can start, stop, jog it, and then as well program separate parameters using the program key allowing you to enter in motor parameters, acceleration, deceleration, 
and many more. The second option would be to use terminal control. Using terminal control, you'd use the analog inputs, or you would use your terminal inputs, your digital inputs. You can use a high speed counter or some other source to give the VFD a reference for speed. You'll see all the S terminals are programmable and they can all be set to an individual and unique purpose. You'll also notice jumpers at the top to set your analog to voltage or current, as well as jumpers for termination for your RS-45 connection. This picture is a B5 VFD. You'll see on the right is an example of your parameters and how you would change them. As you can see from that list there, which is just a short snippet, you can have input terminals programmed to do everything from forward operation, coasting to stop, operational pause, external fault resetting, and so much more. You can program this via the software or via the keypad that's on the VFD itself. And you can control the speeds with either analog inputs or one of the preset modes such as multi-step or your simple PLC. The third option is going to be our remote control. And this would use software such as Visilogic or Unilogic connected to one of our PLCs. Your PLC would then have a one-to-many connection to your VFDs using a Modbus RS-485 network. Today we're going to talk about our two lines, the Vision and the Unistream. So in our Visilogic programming environment, right here we have a blank project. Let's go ahead and open up our hardware configuration. We'll then see inverters on the left side here. We can then double click and add our inverter to the DIN rail. Once it's added to the DIN rail, we can then go in and here we'll see parameters for our COM port settings, our baud rate. We'll need to set an operand here to save our frequency or our torque values. You can see your motor parameters you can set your limits here. And on the second page, we have a few more parameters that we can modify. Once you have this all filled in, you can then hit OK. And it's now going to add in the required data tables and subroutines to properly run and communicate with the VFDs. Once it's finished, you'll be able to see your data tables here on the left. This will have our configuration information. We'll also have a status table. And this will include any information live from the VFD. Going into our ladder, we'll notice here that we have our VFD subroutine being called. This is required in order to properly communicate to the VFD. And from here, we can build out our application. Under the Utils menu, you'll see the UMI send command function block, and this is what we'll use in order to talk and send commands to the VFD. First, you select the Modbus ID, and then we select our command. We can do our run commands, both forward and reverse, jog commands, stop, reset faults, another stop command, we can set our run frequency, we can set our torque, and then we can read and write parameters and our statuses. Let's take a look at how an example project would look. First, we'll go to our help menu, examples, go into version 900, project examples, and all the way to the bottom, we'll see VFD. In here, we have an example project, V570 VFD Demo. Let's open this one. So 
let's go through our HMI screens here. We have our startup menu. We have our configuration screens. We have our status screen. And we have our control screen. In our ladder, in our ladder again, we'll see our VFD subroutine call up to the top. We have our run commands here, linked to various bits and conditions. And all these are linked to our HMI screen to run properly. From here, we could use this project if we wanted to. We could change our PLC model from our hardware configuration by selecting a different PLC model here. We could add more VFDs by going to the inverters. and anything else that we would need to do to customize this to our needs. So let's now take a look at a Unilogic application. So first things first, we need to configure our COM ports. So we'll go to PLC Communications, Physical, and Serial COM. Right here on the properties window on the right, we see it's set currently to a Modbus panel. So we'll change that to a VFD. We'll set our baud rate, data bits, parity, and our stop bits. These will need to match the settings that are on the VFD. Once we set our COM port to VFD, we can then add our VFDs. We'll go to our hardware configuration, motion drives, VFD, and let's add in a VFD here. On the list on the right, we'll see our different series, our UL certified B1 and B5, and then our European B1 models here. Simply double click, and it's gonna ask you to import the diagnostic application. For now, we're going to skip this. We can always add this in later. Once we add our VFD, we can set the Modbus ID. We're going to want to link it to our COM port here. And then we're going to also want to add in a configuration. In the configurations window, we're going to go expand our B1 model is here, and we'll find the one that we'll be using. Simply double click to add it to the list, and then click on the configuration name. In here, we can see all the parameters that are editable. We have our fast configuration. These are gonna be the most used parameters. And then we can drill down further to edit anything that we need to. We can easily view a list of all the parameters that we've modified from this list. Once we're happy with our configuration, we can then start building our application. In our ladder editor, all of the VFD function blocks are going to be located under your toolbox, and then COM VFD, where the vision had one function block to do a multiple number of commands. Unilogic has a function block for each command. Everything from running, stopping, jogging, changing the frequency, reading, writing parameters, etc. Adding a function block to the ladder, we can double click or we can drag and drop. 
If we hover over our parameters, we can see what they're looking for. Our first parameter, A, is our VFD. So we select it from our VFD here. Our second parameter is the frequency. In this example, this is the run frequency function block. So we can type in a value, or we can link this to a tag. This tag can then be linked to an HMI screen or further ladder logic. Our C parameter here is going to be our direction. Again, this can be a tag or this can be a static value. We'll just make this a static value, a 1 for reverse. A D is going to be the status. And for this, we'll need to link a tag. And this will give us some feedback on how the command processed. If there are any communication errors, they will come up here. We can see at the bottom, under our I.O. tab, we have a VFD struct. If we click into here, we can find all sorts of information regarding our VFD and its current status. We have bits to enable communication. We have bits that tell us that the VFD is connected and talking. We have status integers here for our frequency, output voltages, and many more. Let's go back up here. We're going to actually add in now our diagnostic screens. Simply right click on VFD under your motion drives and select import the VFD diagnostic application. This is going to include sample screens and ladder that allows you to easily connect and run your VFD. We'll get a message that it was successful. We can hit OK. We'll see now we have a variety of HMI screens, as well as ladder logic. In our HMI screens, we have everything from your param values. to run screens, help screens, and parameter screens. To use this, we'll need to make sure that we run our UVFD main function. We can do that one of two ways. In our main routine here, our function one, we can click, drag, and drop. Or under our toolbox, under calls, we can use the call function FB. Select our main. Select the VFT control struct as well as the process struct. And these are automatically created. You only need to call this function block one time. In order to get to these screens, we would need to include some sort of screen jump. We could add a button to our main screen. Under Actions, we would add a new action. We would select load screen. And then we could choose one of the screens here. We would select the general. Our trigger would be a press. And we'd hit close. 
Now, once you were to press this button on your HMI screen, it would then bring you to the general diagnostic screen, allowing you to interact with your VFD. Just like Visilogic, let's take a look at an example project. You can download example projects under Help, and then Download Sample Apps. This will be a zip file containing a bunch of folders with a variety of example projects. Go to Project, Open. In the Unilogic Examples folder, we have our list of folders here. At the very bottom, we have Unitronics VFD. And here we have a few different VFD example projects. Let's select one of the simple ones. We can see here under our hardware configuration, motion drives, VFD, VFDs. We have a European B1 model here. We can take a look at our configuration. Here are the modified parameters. In our ladder, we have enable bits for both the VFD itself and for periodic status reading. We have our function block to write our modified parameters to the VFD. We have function blocks for the run frequency, stop commands, writing our acceleration. our deceleration, and on the HMI screen, we have a trend view here. We have a slider, which will allow us to change our frequency. We have acceleration and deceleration numeric boxes that will let us change our acceleration and deceleration times. And we have some buttons here to write our parameters, start, stop the motor, and reverse direction. Just like with Visilogic, we could take this application, we could change our hardware model under hardware configuration, controller model, change current PLC model, and we could change this to whichever PLC model we're actually using. Once modified, we could take this application and configure it to how we need. I've already configured this project for a PLC and VFD we have in the office here, so let's take a look at that. In this example, not much has changed. I've added a VFD here to match the model number for the VFD we have in our office, as well as I've added a configuration. The ladder has been modified as well. We've relinked our tags to VFD2 and configuration2 throughout. And same goes with the HMI screens. If we were to go online with this PLC, We could view our live values under our IO tab, VFD2. We see that our communication is enabled and it is connected. We can go to our status and view our live status values.
Using Unilogic, we have the ability to see our scope, which allows us to keep track of specific tags and show them on a graph. Here we see our bus voltage, while everything else stays pretty stagnant. Using Unitronics VFDs in conjunction with Unitronics PLCs, we have the ability to remote connect. Right here, we have a VNC viewer connected to this PLC. If we change our set point, we can see the graph updating accordingly, and we can start our motor. You can see it ramping up. If I change the frequency again, again, you see it ramping up. We slow darn down our acceleration. The changes are more visible. And the same information we see on the scope here, we can see on the trend view that's on the HMI itself. From here, the possibilities are endless, and you can customize all of these applications to meet your specific needs. This concludes our webinar for today. So at this time, if you have any questions, please type them in the chat box, and we'll go through and answer them.